Okay, so let's practice fitting the ID of a solar cell. We're going to use the uh, VI that we were given in the lecture to practice uh, creating an IV. So we can choose to have any short circuit current, any saturation current, and any R series. So we're given the option to do this because then we know the answer by setting the numbers here. And then what we will do is grab the data that we will create, extract the data, and compare to the parameters that we put in. So let's say that we want a short circuit current of 1.45 amps, a saturation current of 3.67, 10 to the minus 9, and a series resistance of 0 0.0123. So what we need to do is remember that this is pretending we are generating current from an actual measurement. So as we move this knob, we generate, uh, we are applying a voltage across the cell. And so you can see that we generate current, or, or we can measure current. And as we increase the voltage then, the current becomes less and less negative, and we're going towards open circuit voltage. And as you go very slowly, approach current equal to zero. So we've basically hit the open circuit voltage somewhere across right there. So what we would like to do is really no need to go much beyond that, but we would like to get as many points as possible. So I would just sweep back and sweep forward. So pre remember, you're pretending you're making an actual measurement. And as you learn in the lab, the more times you do the measurement, the better you can uh, fit the data. So it never hurts to have too much data. So I'm just simply sweeping back and forth and trying to hit zero, and that should be enough for now. So I'm going to stop my uh, IV measurement, and now I'm going to copy this data. So I'm going to export it to the clipboard, and now that I have it, I'm just going to start analyzing it in Excel. So I'm just going to paste it on a clean sheet. And the first thing you will see is that um, because we set, swept back and forth, then the data is not going to be necessarily organized in uh, order. So you see we go up higher voltage, but then it'll come back again. So it'll be a bit messy. So my recommendation is you simply arrange the data in such a way that uh, it's easier to analyze. Let me just enlarge this here and we're going to arrange the data from, um, doesn't matter if it's from larger to smaller or smaller to larger, so I'm just simply going to go and organize it there. And oh, this didn't do it. Uh, in descending order, for example, or in ascending order. So now that we have it organized, Hopefully, it'll be a little bit easier to uh, analyze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the ID just so that we know that we have good data. So I'm going to plot a scatter plot. And you can see then that it's very nice and easy for us to see the short circuit current somewhere close to the uh, open circuit voltage. And then finally, we have some data there that would be useful for the extraction of the uh, parameters that we don't know. So one of the first things that we can do is just simply analyze the IV as if it was a, a real measurement and figure out what the output power of this cell is. So for example, we would do voltage times current. We're going to co call this the power. And we're going to copy that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend this. So now I have uh, on the same graph the, volt the, the plot of power versus voltage. OK, so if we wanted to find the maximum power point, 
what is it that we could do? Well, we could analyze this and just insert here a row. And what you see is maximum power point corresponds to the point where I have the max power coming out of the cell. And that's why in this particular case, is, uh, because of my convention is negative. So I'm going to find the minimum value, minimum of the data. And you can see it's 0.556. Now we could use Excel to figure out where 0.556 is, but we could also just simply go and look for it. So 0.556. So let's see, 0.556. And as I said before, now that it's organized, it's so much easier to analyze. So there you go. So very simply, then this would be the point where I have the maximum power and you immediately get BMP and IMP. So you can see here, I'm just gonna highlight it. Um, so if I were to bring it over here, I'm just gonna plot this data here. And this is not necessary for you to do, but it's just a way to to see that we've done things correctly. So I'm just gonna plot that those two points there. I'm going to copy them and do a paste special. Um, did paste special. I'm gonna add it as a, a new series with the categories X on the first column. And you can see that right there is the uh, maximum power point, I can highlight it if you want. So I'm gonna change that to, uh, let's say, a triangle. Um, and if you want a nicer way to see it, you can have a yellow triangle. And that's basically it. You can see I have found the maximum power point and that would be BMP and IMP. Very simple, right? Okay, so, but what we really wanted was to, well, not what we really wanted. The other thing that we wanted to do was to extract the parameters of the solar cell that would allow us to then uh, simulate it uh, in something like LD spice, for example. So we would like to extract the short circuit current, the open circuit voltage, and the saturation current. So we're gonna go and grab that data. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste it in a spreadsheet that I already have ready. Um, so let's me, let me uh, just make sure that I have only data that is relevant. So I'm gonna delete the data that I have there, copy the data that I had uh, created before. So I'm gonna go and here. And there we go. So that's once again the data that we had before. And what I'm going to do is fit the voltage. Remember, it's much easier if you uh, solve for the voltage in terms of the current rather than trying to solve the diode equation where the uh, equation is implicit here. If we vary the current, we can mm, uh, easily calculate the voltage. So this particular equation is what I wrote here. So if you want to uh, see what it is, you can um, pause the video here. So that's the equation. This equation right here is the same as the equation that you can see right here. Okay. So what I need to do then is change short circuit current, saturation current, and serial resistance until the blue line, which is my fit, matches the um, red line. So what we're gonna do is, well, first, we really don't know if we are in the exam. We wouldn't know what any of these parameters are, right? But there's one that is very easy to see, and that's the short circuit current. So I can clearly see that the short circuit current is 1.4. So I'm going to go for 1.4 there. So that's getting a little bit better. Now what you can see is that the open circuit voltage that we are uh, fitting is significantly lower than the open circuit voltage that we have here. 
the open circuit voltage is around 509 millivolts. So we could simply change this number, the saturation current, until we hit the open circuit voltage. Or we could calculate it very simply. So the open circuit voltage is going to be given by the equation uh, of the um, solar cell when the current is zero, which means that, uh, well, let me do it in a different way. For now, let's just try and fit it, and then we'll have Excel fit it a little bit uh, uh, better using an automatic fit. So we're going to get close enough. So, okay, so let's say 1e minus 7, so you see we're getting closer, 1e minus 8, we're getting even closer, 1e minus 9, and now we passed it, right? So we know that it's somewhere between 1e minus 8 and 1e minus 9, so maybe somewhere around there. That's pretty close. Now, the zero resistance, you can see the blue line is significantly uh, more shallow than the actual measurement, which means that the series resistance that we have in our fit is larger than the actual resistance. So we know this has to be slow, smaller, so we're getting better. Uh, maybe even smaller. Uh, even smaller. Even smaller. Zero, one, two, three, which is, I knew we were pretty much there, right? So now we're really very, very close. And so what I could try to do, hit the number. So we know this should be a little bit smaller. That's pretty close. So that probably would be a good enough uh, fit. So let's see if we go back to our numbers. We are pretty darn close, right? 1.4 to the short circuit current. The saturation current is uh, 3.67 rather than 4. That would be a correct number. Uh, that would be considered correct in the uh, uh, in the exam, um, our series, we hit it just right on. So for now, hopefully this will help you uh, study. And uh, the best way to be able to do this effectively and quickly is by practicing. So use the VI that you have here, change numbers here, just randomly put numbers that come to your mind. Uh, generate an IV, put it in Excel, analyze it. It'll be very nice and easy to extract the maximum power point. And from there, you can match the maximum, uh, the current at maximum power point and the voltage at maximum power point. Uh, and then what we did after that is grab that data and we analyzed it uh, by, or sorry, we fit it by changing the three parameters that we didn't know. So hopefully with this, uh, you'll feel a little bit more prepared for the exam. Remember, practice.